good evening nana here today i am going to discuss about the retroactive pricing in ebis as well as in fusion applications when i was comparing uh, the ebis functionality uh, i find that it is having a reduced functionality in fusion i'm not very sure about it but i feel that there may be some setups which are missing and then if you find that uh, that is not correct please write to me at nana.app60@gmail.com i will not correct myself i want to learn the full functionality but when i examined it i found that there is a small uh, reduction in the functionality as far as fusion application is concerned so i will not go ahead and then i will not explain this retroactive pricing in ebus basically so let me let me go on short sh my screen and then i will not explain everything inside on this one now what i'm going to do is let me uh, go and then create a supplier i'm in the purchasing so let me create a supplier supplier based supplier so i will be creating a supplier and then i will not start to uh make a demonstration on this retroactive pricing so we go into this i am working on a 12.2.6 instance and then uh, uh, we will now go on and create a supplier so while i'm creating the supplier i'm going to enable the <coughs> what's called the ers functionality or not the ers the automatic document uh, uh, creation functionality also i can create a supplier so let me create a supplier i'm clicking on the get supplier so let me go ahead and then create the supplier actually <coughs> <coughs> so i will now make this as a nana underscore a retro underscore sub one so through which i will be going ahead of this now so the supply name is nana underscore retro underscore sub one and go ahead and click on apply now so it is for the retroactive pricing testing now so i am applying it <coughs> it will go to the next screen from there i will now give a save now so it is not the possible uh, matching organization is not showing you it doesn't matter i click on whatever is create a new organization go ahead on this and then create a new organization so the dqms results i am ignoring it and then i am creating a new organization for this now the data quality management is there in fusion also it is also having a similar functionality there so we are ignoring the results of the dqm and then now we are not creating a new organization the supplier organization we are creating it now so once it goes to the main screen <coughs> we will uh, give a save now in this page we are not going to make any update we are now give a save and then afterwards we go down in the payment details i am going to make another payment as a default payment so that what happens a p2p push will now be established if we are going for an automatic route uh, uh, we are not of course not going to go for this now in your in this in this uh, demonstration we will be manually making the invoices now i click on save now so nana underscore retro, retro underscore sub one is now getting saved and go to the address book and then let me create an address book now click on the address book so click on create i will now create an address book now so the address and sites are together as far as ebus is concerned where they are all separate ones as far as uh, fusion is concerned now they made it separate so i will now say address address one and then go down <laughs> i will now put the site name over here now i will now say site one and then enable it for purchasing and payment and then click on continue now so the address other things the city county and state are missing now so it will not throw an error uh, that what happens uh, these informations are not available here <clears throat> again the dqm comes to the picture and that will be throwing an error it is not actually an error it is only a warning message if i ignore the warning message and click on continue and then go ahead now then on the next line uh, will be having to give the multi org access control fine i have only one uh, ou applicable for this no fine instead of the ou and then click on apply which the address is now created so we have the site one which is getting created for the vision operations then i'll now go on and create a contact directory for you a user account i'm going to create now so uh, we are not uh, testing the ers functionality this now when we go there go to the contact directory it has already been demonstrated to you in the previous trainings i click on create now i'm now going to create a uh, address now fine a contact directory for you now so the person who is going to work upon in this company fine go there i'll now put my name over here now ananta <clears throat> last name is nana then go there and then i will give a uh, email address fine it is a uh, uh, nana underscore retro at gmail.com but just for understanding how i'm doing it fine go there after having given the email id what happens click on some of the field the email gets registered and then afterwards uh, you click on the create a contact directory so nana underscore retro at gmail.com is the username fine click on it so this system automatically prompts the same one and then i go there i'm not going to give the, all the possible responsibilities for this response for this one fine i will not click on this one fine I will now select everything. All the possible responsibilities are now given to the supplier. 
might go there. So this is a keyhole opening uh, for the iSupplier portal. Might go there. Click on apply by which the contact directory is now getting created. So this supplier can very well log in with the null underscore retro at gmail.com. So the user name is now created. So let us go to uh, another one and then write to what I was working on it. I'm going to go there. So I'm not going to go there. I will now go to another browser actually. I will now go to another browser. From there, I will now log in with this one. So I can do that. Is anana retro at gmail.com. The system gives a password of welcome now. I go there. So I'm giving a password of welcome and then click on login now. So we are going to log in now. So once when you log in, the password expires now. <clears throat> it will now ask you to give a new password. So we will now change the password now. The password is welcome. The new password is welcome one. I'm giving a welcome password to submit by which we'll now go into the home page of this now find uh, or the landing page of this now. We'll go there. So here I will now have to add two favorites now find click on update password and right? now add to favorites click on it. So we had to have one favorite click on add to favorites. I'm going to add to favorites. I'm working on a 2.2.6 instance and so what happens is now looking similar to fusion actually and go there. Drop it on. I will now choose the iSupply portal and then give a go now. <clears throat> it's now coming from home page. I'll select it and then click on add to favorites now. And that's it. Click on apply now. So by which it will be coming into the main page now. Fine. If you click on the home page on this now, fine. We'll now go into the page where we'll now see this now. So we are now into the ISA place home page, nana underscore retro at gmail.com. Fine. Go there. We'll now go on the get right up. Fine. As of now, the thing is there. So we have got a notification from the system that what happens. They, this is admin has given a notification for him. From the vision interface, he has got a notification. He can now look at the notification and then afterwards he cannot, uh, he cannot read it. And then there's a login and then there's a password is welcome. All these things are coming. Fine. Click on OK and then accept it. The notification is now ready. So it will be going away from this place now. It will now be visible. And then uh, nothing is visible. If you click on the supplier homepage, the notification is gone now. Fine, go there. So as and when we approve any PO, what happens? It gets perpetually communicated to the supplier and then we'll be able to see the purchase all around. Okay, now fine, go there. So the purchase is now there. Fine, go there. We'll now go and get an item. Good items, master items. So let me create a uh, test item fine, for the M1R. <clears throat> go there. So for the M1R, I'm going to create it now. So item is nana underscore retro underscore item right it is a retractive pricing test retractive <clears throat> price test i go there i will not go there tools and then go to copy organization then i will apply a template of purchasing template i will not play it. i go to the purchasing area and then give a list price now go, there. go to the purchasing and then give a list price then. okay go there and then i will not enable use of tools supply list this default buyer is required only for uh, VMI, uh, whereas in Fusion, it is required for even PR to PO conversion. Fine, that is what it is. The default buyer is required only for VMI purposes, whereas in Fusion, it is required for PR to PO automation or automation automatically. I go there, countless commit by which the item is now getting created. Non underscore retro item is already, and go there. <clears throat> in the meantime, what happens? You now open up one more uh, file on the automatic documentation now, and go there. <clears throat> so we are going to see this now, and go there. I will now go to the automatic document creation. This is the file. Open it up now. So this file will tell you about how we are going to automatically create a document now. So uh, <coughs> they're not coming up now. So, so we have to create a SR, ASR, ASL, BPA. This is the automatic documentation setups now. So once when an approved trustee's requisition comes and hits its ADZ, upon running a create release, you'll be getting a blanket release. Right? This uh, first one, you're going to do. there are three ways of automatic documentation. One way a blanket route, one way a bit code, and then one way a contract. So we are going to test this retroactive pricing, this blanket route. Right? Not a blanket route, it's actually a global BPA. We're going to do it now. Fine. It's slightly modified on this now. We'll go there and see this now. Fine. Go there. So item is not done. Fine. Go to the tools and then go to the organization assignment and then let's assign it. The item is now created. I will now assign it to the heart. Then, uh, when you go on and have a look at this one, this one, it says what for the SR, ASR, ASL, BPA, we need to have an assignment set being created. Now, fine, let us move on and get the assignment set also. Fine, close it now. So, let us go to the supply base and then create assignment set now. Fine, go to the supply base and then I will now create <coughs> one assignment set. Go to the assign sourcing rules, the navigation supply base, assign sourcing rules in which I am now going to get assignment set now. And I will now say mm, uh, this is for retroactive pricing just fine, nana underscore, fine, the retro underscore. Assign <coughs> set. I will not make it as not fine. Go there. I will not give a map back on fine. Don't colorless commit. So by which this nana retro assign set is now created. Fine. Go there. Close it and then we will not put it in the profile now. Go to the edit and then go to the preferences and go to the profiles. So on the personal profile of this, I will not go to put it now. Fine. Go there is MRP. 
percentage default percentage so percentage set percentage is the profile and go there as no go, go to go it now find go there i'm going it so let me replace this one with this one whatever i created so what i was the entire automatic documentation will be created in the same set this will be used mainly with the ascp module for their supply scheduling so we are now overriding it with the existing one with our nana retro smile not have so system will be creating the adz automatically in this area only in this one so in this place it will be creating it actually so we go there and then we'll now go on the global bpn and we'll go there so i have having done this we go to the bio work center and then go to the agreements so and then let me create a global bpn anything which is created via uh your this thing is a global bpa infusion each and everything is basically global bpa such so we are not going to get a global bpa now for that <clears throat> and then the create the blanket program and click on go now i am not going to get a global bpa now so we go there and then i will now create a global bpa <clears throat> so whenever you are creating a global bpa and then when you want to use it on a adz you have to have the from and to date fine if you if the to date is absent will not be working properly so go there it is nana underscore retro and then give a tap i'm putting this up here okay side is coming out okay i'm not putting an amount agree this gets copied into amount limit now fine go there the effective date is very important when you want to give it to the adc now fine adc needs it and then normally what happens you give one day before because what happens sometimes the um, day end it will be causing a problem fine so make a start from 8th and then on and give a date normally uh, in our company it will be three months period actually fine a bp will be normally uh, negotiated for uh, three things fine for that i will not say retro active test fine the one we are going to do it now fine go there i am not uh, touching anything on this one fine go there this uh, what happens i am not adding any attachments also i don't know leave it as well and then go there go to the lines area fine this amount agreed will be getting copied in the amount limit and then this is going to be the controlling factor for all the releases now fine all the cumulative releases cannot exceed the amount limit of a bpa now fine that is also true in uh, fusion fine uh, go there go to the lines area and then here what happens i going to do it now click on the lines area let me add the lines now go there so it is nana underscore retro <clears throat> just wait for it and then it will be coming up so populate the line over here now <clears throat> so the line is coming fine go there so everything is now coming the price is also will be coming so let me delete the remaining lines fine delete it click on s now so i'm deleting all of the lines now so here in this exercise i'm not going to test any uh, limits actually fine limits are all already tested and then shown to you uh, so limits i'm not going to edit. if you go on and click on edit now fine so we have a high limit as well as a low limit fine the low limits are not getting going to be tested now fine we have a line level low limit fine we have a minimum release mr on the lines region as well as mr on the terms region these amount agreed and quantity agreed are only for information purposes they do not have any functional control and i am not also going to test the place breaks fine this is all tested for you fine the item attributes which are coming up as only for self service procurement i procurement fine so that will be tested in a different module so many tests we are not doing it now because we mainly concentrating only on the retroactive pricing now and go there click on apply and then i can even put a supplier item now fine i'll just say uh, retro underscore sub underscore item fine the supplier is calling this item as this now fine so this will also be coming as a po so supplier item is also put over here now fine click on apply <clears throat> and remember we cannot place the purchase order on the supplier item supplier item can only be indicative and then that cannot be having any control on this now after having given the line what happens i go to the controls and then here what i am going to do is i will not first of all enable uh, this is a multi org access control and so what happens i am not going to add only one operating unit this is not fine and then i will not enable the automatic door sourcing as well as update the sourcing rules on assignments if these two tick marks are put what happens the adc gets auto created now this are as are asl bp will be automatically created on this now and go there as one and then afterwards what happens the retroactive pricing apply price updates to existing pos as well as communicate price updates so these two things are also i'm not doing it now fine uh, while doing it what exactly is the retroactive pricing i'll not tell you what exactly this so this is not done so with these controls fine and the controls we are not going to submit this one fine click on submit now i'm going to submit so let us now submit it so the po is not getting submitted now <clears throat> 6833 is now submitted now and go there so once we will submit at 6833 will now go there will now uh, uh, will uh, basically close this one fine go there close this one and then go to the one 6833 we can very well do it now go to the purchase orders and then give a control f11 control f11 will now retrieve the latest purchase order for us now that is 6833 is now going to come up now fine go there you can now see and that will be a global bpn <clears throat> so the latest purchase order will be done so is now under approval now fine 6833 has come over here now fine it's global in nature and then uh, 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 we can now see all these things now fine go there And then the supplier item also is coming up over here now. <clears throat> so is there a tracking process? The description is coming. The supplier item is also coming. Up. Now what I'm going to do? I will now see my assignment set. Now fine, it will not be having anything at all. Fine. If you go to the supply base and then go to the assignment set, fine. 
assign sourcing rules and then let us now query this is not fine it is a nana percentage rate percentage is query not fine there will not be any entry at all fine no entry is coming there fine so there is no entry now we will not run a concrete for generating this sourcing rule fine the four all the four can be generated in one go fine by running a concurrent infusion also we have the same similar concurrent so by which when you generate what happens all the four components of adc will be created automatically sr asr aslb will be created so we go there and run the concurrent now fine go there it is all we are alternator you long go that run a new concurrent now fine it is generate generate i think you have to generate sourcing rules as well as asl fine in the blanket agree blanket agreements like go there go it and then the supplier is uh, nana percentage retro percentage and then you have to uh, the blanket number is 6833 6833 is bpa number now and then go there site one and then uh, you know see select agreement lines you know see all lines <coughs> or and go to it now go there sourcing level go there drop it down And then here, what happens? We'll now choose item level. We'll go to something that's the highest level. Fine, go there. And then the uh, generation method. Fine, we'll now use the what happens? The release using auto create. This is a powerful workflow when compared to the what happens? Uh, automatic release. Now, fine, release using auto create is a more powerful one than the automatic automatic release. Now, so we'll now use the powerful one. This one release using auto create. Fine, click on OK. And then I'm going to submit it. Now, fine, click on submit. And then we can even uh, do this through a workflow background process also. So through this also we can do it now. Fine, either way, whichever way you want, you can do it now. Fine. So once when it is completed, you can now see very well uh, what happens. The sourcing rule, the, all the four components are now created. Fine, close it now. Well, now on this place, let us now requery it now. First of all, go there and then requery it, paste it, and then requery it now. We can now see one entry has come now. Fine, what else? The item has come now. Fine, go there. And then it is now creating what happens a standard one. So the sourcing rules created by the system is uh, known as a PURC underscore some running number now. Fine, go there, take it a copy. So the S the sourcing rule is there. Fine, close it now. We'll now go and then have a look at the sourcing rule. Assign sourcing rule is there. Open the sourcing rule and then we'll now query it now. Fine, go to the query mode and then paste it now. Fine, query it. So anything automatically created will be having a prefix as PURC. The from date and to date is now coming over here now. Buy from the supplier is 100 percent, and then the manning that. So the SR ASR component we are now already checked it now. Fine, go that. So we have checked the SR and ASR. We'll now see the ASL BP entry now. Fine, go that. We'll now have a look at the ASL BP entry. Fine, go that. Close it now. We'll now go to the approved supply list now. Approved supply list. <coughs> and then go and then query it. Now. Go and query it. The, we'll now query it now. Fine. So there uh, we'll now say nana percentage red percentage and then query it now. You can now see there will be an entry on this now. ASL entry will be there. <coughs> So the system automatically makes the status as new, new or approved are having a similar functionality, and so whatever there is no problem at all. Fine, go there and do it. And then the record is uh, you can now see the global is yes, no fine. That means what he the approved supplier for this item for all the inventory orgs, not only for M1, it is for all the inventory orgs. And keep your cursor over there and then click on the attributes now. Here you can now see the blanket agreement is now coming. Fine, there are three types of ADCs are there. Fine, one is the blanket, one is the contract, and then the quotation. Fine, we are now working on the blanket, so it's all there. Global the release using auto grade is also there. Fine, go there and then with the appropriate dates over here. Fine, the dates are coming. The data for petting us is one. So this completes the complete setup of the ADZ automatically. So we also have a similar functionality in Fusion for creating the complete ones. SR, ASR, ASL, BBA automatically running through a concurrent. Now what happens? I'm going to go to go and make a requisition for this one. Fine, we'll go and make a requisition. Now fine, go there. Requisition is a start point of a demand sign. Go there, click on it now, and then I'll we'll make a requisition. Fine, go to the requisitions now. <clears throat> Let us now make a requisition for this one. Item is Nana percentage retro percentage. Then give a tap. The one I'm going to give it now. Fine, give it up. <coughs> item is going to come. So as soon as the item comes, the supplier on site is automatically getting populated because it's a global one. And go there. I will not put an item point of one not one. Then give it up. <coughs> go there. I will not give a need be date now. Fine. Somewhere around that now. Fine. Go there. Click on OK. And then I will not change the organization to Seattle. Do not buy anything for the master. Always buy only for the child. Now fine. Go there. Location is M1. And then give it up. And that's it. And then I'm going to commit. Fine. One plus commit. So this is now done. <coughs> now. The requisition is now getting created. Fine. Now take copy the requisition. Now fine. Take copy. It doesn't click on approve now. I'm not going to approve it now. So click on approve. Click on OK. In the meantime, what happens? We can go to the supplier portal and then have a look at it now. Fine. Supplier portal. If we refresh it, fine. If we give a refresh now, you will now see that six eight three three coming up over here now. Fine. Six eight three three is now come up over here now. So uh, he has also got a uh, email notification that six eight three three has been approved. Fine. He is now having it as a PDF document. PDF document also. So he is also getting the supplier is getting in his portal now. Fine. It gets perpetually communicated upon every approval. Now. Fine. Go there and see this now. So we'll now go there and then now uh, this is now approved. Fine. Go there. We'll now go to the requisition summary and then have a look at it now. We go to the requisition summary and then have a look at it. Paste it and then query it now. Fine. Give a tap and then query it. Click on find now. <clears throat> now you go there is approved now. If you go to the tools, then view approval through workflow. So tools view approved through workflow the one approved one. You can now see this is now gone in the workflow status. How it is going? We will now have a look at it. Now, if I click on the status diagram, the status diagram will now tell you the progress. Now, if I go there, <clears throat> so 
we'll have a look at it fine the green line is showing the progress fine go there ching 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 it's now going 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 go there fine go there go there now it's now waiting for the background process now fine this stage it's now showing you that what happens it's now waiting for the background process so now let us now run the background engine so that what happens it gets the the po auto create po is getting launched that workflow is getting launched and then it goes to it by creating a po now fine go there so the request will be converted to po automatically fine we'll now run the workflow background process fine all we are alternate fine go there and then we'll now run the workflow background process <laughs> I open back and I'm going to run it now. Fine. Is the process default is yes now? Or that is a no. Fine. Go there. Click on OK. And then click on submit now. Fine. Once it is running, you can see that it will be running. Click on find now. So once when it is completed, what happens? It is now generating the some of the things also. The sourcing rules also getting generated. <coughs> fine. It is not done. Workflow has now completed it. Fine. Go there. We'll now refresh the workflow and have a look at it now. Fine. Go there. So in this place itself, we'll now click again on the status diagram. <coughs> we'll now see what has happened to this. <coughs> go there. Go further, 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 further. You go there. Here, what happens? It was previously waiting at the background process. Now, what happens? It is not got completed. And then the PO auto create workflow has now fired. And then, what happens? It does not create a standard purchase order. The standard purchase order has been created. Now, what happens? You go there and have a look at it. Now, this place will now go there. So, we will now go to the purchase order summary. For one, not one quantity is one fine purchase order summary. If you go on and make a blank query, and you go on and see this is not fine. You'll now see the latest purchase order is SPO. We previously, we have a BPA. Now, what happens? We have a SPO going up fine. Go there. Us. So in this workflow, if you are going to use a normal BPA upon create release concurrent, a BR will be getting created. Now what happens is a global BPA. In a global BPA, we have to run a workflow background and then that will be creating a SPO. It's fine. It is creating a standard purchase order. There is a difference between the normal BPA and the global BPA route. Now fine, go there. So you open it up and then have a look at it. Now we are going to receive it now. Fine. One not one quantity is at 10 prices. Now fine, go there. Go to the shipments and then have a look at it now. We will now see that it will now make uh, the thing to direct now. <clears throat> you are not going to make it as what? As a, go to the receiving controls and then the direct delivery is okay. Fine, go there. And then see the thing. Fine, there's a 3 way PO. Fine, it's okay. Well, now go there. And then we'll now approve it. Now. Fine, click on approve. So 6834 is the one. Now, what happens? The total amount released, I guess, is global agreement must be less than or equal. There's a, there's a problem now. We're given there. Is a, so let us now reduce the, what happens, the quantity to, let us say, some, uh, slightly. What happens? Uh, uh, the total amount is a thousand. Now exceeding it. Now, fine, let us say, I'll now make a change to it. So this is what else. not causing a problem. Fine. I'll make a check. That is why what happens is they're not gone for approval also. Approval has failed actually. Otherwise, what happens will be going to an approval status. So since the amount is exceeding, it has not gone for approval at all. So it's not gone there. Fine. Go there. Now click on approve. We are not manually approving it. Had the amount be less than that, it will be getting approved now. Fine. Go there. 6834 is now approved. So let us go and then receive it now. Fine. Go to the window and then go to the navigator and then let us navigate. Go there. We'll now go to the receiving and then go to the receipts. And then this is the direct receipt routing. So we can now receive it directly. Six eight three four is the one we are going to receive it. So we'll go there. Six eight three four is the one, and then give a tap, and then query for it. Now find the purchase order. I'm going to query it now, <clears throat> and then let us now receive it directly. So close it, and then we are going to receive it now. Fine, select it, select the line, and then we'll now receive it now. And select it and then what happens? You're going to receive it now. Fine. No saying purchase order. Tolerance is exceeded. Doesn't matter. Fine. Go it. Okay. Doesn't matter. Uh, go further. And then uh, you go further, further. And then I'll give a submittary over here now. Stores is a submittary. I'm going to do it now. Fine. I'm putting asset submittary over here. And then I'm going to commit it now. Upon committing, what happens? Your yeah, yeah, receiving transaction process concurrent will be running now. Upon every action that is in the receiving area, whether it's going to be receive or a correction or returns or whatever it is now, fine. the RTP will run now. Upon RTP completion, the activity gets completed. Now. Fine. Go there. It's not complete. Now we will now go to the payables and then try to create an invoice for this now. Fine. We will now go there, create an invoice for this now. So once when the RTP is completed, what happens? It will be completed now. I go there. It will be getting updated on the purchase order also. If you go to the window and then go to the purchase order summary. Purchase orders. Now, go there. We will now requery the purchase order. Fine. Otherwise, we will now go to the shipments. And then here, we will now go to this place. What happens? You go to the status now. Fine. Go there. If you give a refresh, control F now, refresh it. What happens? It will now say it will be received now. Fine. Ordered. Received has to come now. Fine. I think it's still the concurrent is running now. <coughs> So once when the concurrent gets completed, what happens? It'll be saying, what happens? The received will be 90 now. Wait for the RTP to complete. Sometimes what happens? The RTP will be taking a longer time now. So once when the RTP is completed, what happens? It will be getting updated everywhere, wherever it is linked to. Sometimes RTP will be having a link to the external systems of other ERPs also. That way it's programmed. So wait for the RTP to complete. So once when it is completed, what happens? It will be getting updated everywhere now. Fine. Go the control flow one. If you see it, what happens? You can now see received has to come as 90 now. Control flow You can even receive at the line level itself now. And go there. Still running, <clears throat> so so much of time is taking now. Now we are going to make a payment to the supplier also. 
we are not going to make a payment also there also so control of all you can see now we're not done we go there go there <coughs> it's still running i don't know why it's taking so much of time this again <coughs> rtp is not running i might not have run this uh, rtp for a pretty long time and so what about it's not taking a longer time for him right? so the functionality is what the uh, purchase order gets updated over here right? it will be getting updated now you see you now there is no receive 19 and then it has been closed for receiving also i'm not coming and not receive funding so we'll go there and then we'll locate an invoice now i'm going to make up some payment to the supplier now fine go there 6834 is a po fine close it and then we'll also switch responsibility to payables and now go to the payables now and then we'll not make a payment to the supplier also <coughs> so we are going to go there and make a payment fine go to the invoices and then here what about the go to the entry and then invoices so 6834 is the po number so i will now put the identifying po over there and then give a tap so by which the line gets populated now fine go to the po number 6834 Six eight three four. Then give a tap. Everything will be getting populated. <coughs> we will now create invoice for this one. So we are given ninety quantities over here. Now fine. Let us now put the entire ninety over here. It is a three way PO match. And so oh, what happens? We have to make the header as a PO match. Now fine. Go there. Invoice date is today's date. And then I will give an invoice number as one not one now. <coughs> So invoice number is one not one. Then you tap. It is for ninety dollars. I will not put an amount of what nine hundred now. Is a ten dollars one fine. Go go further now. And then here I will not see what happens. It must be a PO match. Fine is okay. The PO match is there. Fine. Go and commit. And then let me match it. If the PO says a PO match, we have to match it to only a PO, not a receipt. Fine. Even though we are receipt, we cannot match it. Not fine. We have to match only to PO. So the PO is a master master document where what happens? The payables has to follow PO. So the match option has been kept as PO. And then I'm going to click on the match, and then I will now obtain the line level distribution by relieving the accruals. The accruals will be getting relieved. I'm going to click on the match. So six eight three four will be coming over here now. By the ninety quantity, I'm going to give it now. So we will now obtain right relieval by uh, accrual relieving is a must in our company in Spot Industries Bombay. Uh, you cannot create any manual invoice at all. Right? Otherwise, we have to have an audit approval for this now. Because the moment you create a manual invoice, the accruals uh, will now lose its uh, what happens value. Actually. So this way, what happens is not done. Now, fine. Go to select it. And then enter any quantity. Then now give one point. Click on match. I'm not going to match match it now. I'm now getting the line level distribution over here now. So the any quantity is ordered. I'm not getting it now. Fine. Ordered, received. Fine. It's also showing, but it is not a mandatory thing to receive it because it's a three-way PO match. <laughs> but since it is a three-way, if it is not received, it will not raise a hole now. Fine. In our case, it's not so. Because it's okay. If I now will not calculate the tax, now if I click on calculate tax, the tax is getting calculated, and then will not show you how much of tax is because it's a M1 organization which is having the state, city, and county taxes as far as EBIT tax is concerned now. So it will be coming as 962.10. Let me go and then correct the header now. 962.0. 962. Oh, sorry, it is 962.10. The red color will go away now. If I go there and then come to this comment, and then I'm going to validate the invoice. So it is not validated. If I go there, go to the actions, and then go to validate the invoice. <coughs> So let us now validate the invoice for this now. First of all, validate it. Click on validate and then click on OK. So invoice gets validated, and then again when go on and do the accounting also. So once when it is accounted, it will be passed via J SLA into GL actually. <clears throat> so the validation process is now going on. It will make a check whether everything is okay or not. Then it will now go to the validator status. I will now do the create accounting. My invoice also has to be accounted, and then the payments also has to be accounted. So we will not do the invoice accounting first, and then afterwards what happens? We will not go into the payment documents, and then we will not make a payment. So at this stage, the retroactive pricing activity starts. It's now validated. Now I go there. So go to the actions, and then let us now go on and create accounting. Now I click on actions, and then go on and create accounting. I click on create accounting. I'll now make it as what draft only, right? not a final one. Uh, <coughs> I'll now make it as a draft. So later on, what happens? They'll be making it as a final actually. Well, now let us now go on and create accounting now. And the accounting account is coming as no now. Once when it is done, what happens? We'll now see <coughs> what happens over there. So it is now accounted. So after the accounting is concerned, what happens? We will be going to the payment org bench now. I click on the payment org bench and then we will now go to the payment org bench. Then the retroactive pricing starts. So for a particular price, invoice for ninety quantities at ten dollars, what happens? We already made the payment. So at this time, supplier feels that if we have a contract against which there will be multiple such POs now, and against one contract will be having multiple such POs, and then those POs, what happens? The accounting has been successfully created. I uh, will now complete this activity on this now. Fine, now go there. Accounted is no because what happens in the draft stage basically. Fine, go there. Uh, you go to the actions, then go to the pay in full now. Right, click on pay in full, and then we will now go to the payment workbench now. From the invoice workbench, we are now jumping into the payment workbench, <coughs> and then let us now make a payment now. 
so since it is a vision, everything is fully set now, fine. So the payment date is not in the open period. So we had to open the period also, fine. Uh, uh, the period is not open. I go there. I'll not go to the window and then I go to the navigator now. And ensure that the tools closer form is not enabled. Fine, go there. We had to open the periods now, fine. Go to the accounting and then go to the control payables periods. We had to open the periods actually. <clears throat> go there. So this is now, is now in the month of March 18 now. Fine, go there. March 18 is never open. I will not open the period. Go there. So it's the individual period opening. Fine, go there. Commit. Fine, it's not open. So you know, go there. You will not be able to go there. No. Fine, go there. Go to this place. And then here, you're not done. Go for that. And then this place, whatever. I'm going to give the payment process profile directly. So, fine. Once I give it, the remaining things will now get auto populated over here now. Fine. I will not put a payment process profile over here now. I will not put a standard check format over here now and then commit. So by which the remaining are all getting created. It will be having a reference to the invoice. Remember, payments has to be referencing an invoice. Without an invoice, we cannot make a payment at all. So it will be referencing invoice and then it will not getting paid. Now. <clears throat> and then once it is paid, we can even uh, go for accounting now. Fine. Then unprocessed, we can very well process the accounting also. <clears throat> so the payment accounting as well as the invoice accounting as we done, then only what happens, it will be possible for us to do the reconciliation activities and other activities in GL. So the financial statement generation needs an accounting from all the activities basically. Even the inventory transactions as we push into GL for doing the accounting now. So now we are now making a payment to the supplier. So at this stage, the supplier feels no, okay, fine. Now it's not come fine, go there. Along with that, it will be fully paid and go there. So we'll not go to the actions and then go to the create accounting now. So we'll not perform a create accounting over there. So clear, click on create accounting and then we'll make it as a final. So that what happens, you can now see something or click on okay. It is in an unprocessed state. Now we are creating an accounting on the payment side. So by which the complete P2P process for this particular purchase order is now complete now. Now I'll tell you what happens now. So once when it is accounted, uh, what happens, you know, say owner could not be created because there is something, some problem will be there because of which is unable to do it. So we can even run the concurrent call create accounting and then do the create accounting. So let us now leave it and go there. So it's all done now. Fine. So we will now close everything over there and go there. We'll now close it. So the one close it now. Now uh, what the supplier is saying is that uh, because of certain uh, problems, he's saying that what happens, the price of 10 is not okay. We have already given a price of the 10 in the contract in the, in the BPA now. So what he says is uh, he wants an increase of 1 rupee now. So he wants to make a change of the 1 rupee. So this is very much possible. So if a supplier says that what happens uh, because of certain reasons, he wants to make a change and then there are some 10 or 15 POs which are already released and then uh, it will now do the retroactive update on all the POs basically. So for this, what happens first of all, to perform the retroactive date, you go to the setups, and then go to organization, and then go to the receiving options. In the receiving options, we have to have the retroactive, retroactive uh, adjusting price account has to be given. If that price account is not given, it will not perform the retroactive update at all. So that is a mandatory one. So you go there and then have a look at it. Right? The receiving options for the M1 organization, there is a retroactive price adjustment account that has to be specified without which we cannot do anything at all. So the screen is not coming up now, fine. Once when it is coming up, I'll not show you that one now. I'll not choose the organization and then show you the retroactive price adjustment account, right? We had to get it from the financials basically. They will be giving you the account and then that account has to be populated over here now. So that is the first step for the retroactive pricing. Now, supplier is asking for an increase in price and then uh, we are going to adjust it on the BPA now. And against BPA, there may be some 10 or 15 documents which are released and then it will not perform an update on all the documents basically. And remember, we have already paid him. So, we have to make additional payment to him now. So a retroactive invoice also will be created over here. So that is how it works now. Fine, it's a beautiful functionality. And then uh, it works over here now like this. Fine, go there, drop it down. And then I want to the Seattle manufacturing. You on Seattle manufacturing, then you go now. So here, if you see it, whatever you have, the retroactive price adjustment account is already populated over here. Now. Fine, this is the first step fine, for the retroactive pricing. And close it now. We'll now go and then modify the BPA now directly. Fine, go there, close it now. We'll now modify the BPA directly. Fine, go there, and then we'll now modify the BPA now. You go to the BioWorks Center and then go to the uh, what happens agreement now. 6834 is the one, 6833 rather. 683 is the agreement and go there. We'll now go on the search and then we'll now modify it. Because the supplier wanted it now. So we are going to make a modification on this now. So let us query 6833 as a BPA now. So click on the search and then we'll now query for the 6833. And click on the search button here and then query the 6833. 6834 is the SPO now. 6833 and then give a go now. It'll be coming on the bottom now. And then let us go on the update it directly. So here, what happens? I click on the hyperlink on this now. It is only for viewing now. If you click on the hyperlink, you are going to review it now. And then we will not perform an update on this. Now. <clears throat> so.
so uh, we are not going to give it now fine over there so the document is now getting opened up and then i'll now go for an update if i click on the update on the right hand side and then now directly go to the lines area right so go to the lines area so i have now given an update uh, and go there and then uh, once we give update fine click on the lines area now you go to the lines area and then it'll modify the price so this must have been mutually agreed between the supplier as well as the what happens the implementing company so uh, the purchase officer has agreed okay i am agreeing for it so if that is the case then only we can go for it if the purchase officer is not agreeing for the increase in price he will not say so many reasons because some taxation has got increased so suddenly gst has been introduced so he will not give an justification to the purchase officer he will not say okay i have not make a modification and then against this bpa there are so many uh, documents which have been made now uh, everything will be getting updated to this price I click on save now. So six eight three three is now modified from ten to eleven now. The price has now gone to ten to eleven. I will now give a save now. And then afterwards you are going to submit for approval. <clears throat> so six eight three three is now getting saved. So whenever you make a major change, it will be creating a revision now. So it is now there. <clears throat> it is not done. I go there. Revision one is now created. I click on submit now. So by which it will be submitted for approval. So once it is submitted for approval, beginning approval now. Six eight three four will not be changed now. Fine. The six eight three four has to change. Fine. Now six eight three three is not submitted properly. Go ahead, close it now. Fine. Go there. This place is not done now. Uh, I have not. I don't need the supply area. Fine. Go there. Close it now. Uh, we can now see on this area itself what happens. Six eight three four will come now. Fine. If I refresh this case, the supply area, we can now see six eight three four is not coming up. Fine. That is already been approved, and then he is also got it. Now. now what happens? We are now going to run a retroactive price update concurrent now. To go there and then have a look at it now. Find out the purchase orders. And then if you retrieve the latest purchase order, six eight three four will be coming. Find control from will not retrieve the latest purchase order. Six eight three four will not be updated even though six eight three three is updated now. <clears throat> so we are going to retrieve the latest purchase order on the purchase order screen now. And then you can see the price is still ten now. Find the price is still ten now. Six eight three four is running it. Now we will not run the concurrent. The concurrent will be basically updating it now. In fusion, there is no need to run any concurrent at all. It does automatically actually. So alt here, alt and enter. So let us now run the concurrent retroactive price update. Retroactive. Ret sorry, <clears throat> it is a retroactive price update. Now I go there. Is the one. So you go there. And then the supplier is Nana percentage retro percentage. And then you would have now supplier site is site one. Right? Uh, agreement number is not required. This is the most sufficient. Okay, and then we are running it. I go there. So we are going to run it now. I go there and then pass it on. Fine, click on submit. So upon passing it on, what happens? You don't see. That it will be running now. <clears throat> All done. So the retroactive price of document is not running. <clears throat> so it is not done. So the PO output for communication will be communicated to the supplier also upon this upon this change now. I go there. So the PO output communication is basically responsible for communicating to the supplier about this change actually. So the supplier also will be getting a notification of this now <coughs> about the change. We go there. We will not go to the supplier area and then. Here we'll now go on. That. There is only one uh, mail there, one email for you now. We'll now refresh the screen on the supply portal now. <coughs> the new order has been communicated to him. Fine. Apart from which, I thought that he'll be getting a what is called a notification here, but no notification has come over here now. Fine. I thought a notification will be coming here. Now. The orders at a glance is not showing you all these things now. Six eight three eight. Six eight. On the supply homepage, let me click on it. You now see. Okay, you haven't got any uh, communication basically on this one. <coughs> then go there. Six eight three four is not at approved because what happens? It is it is now gone for uh, this thing. Fine, go there and have a look at it now. Fine. So uh, now uh, if you go on and query the six eight three four, it is now missing from that place. We will not see what happens with this now. Fine, go there. Paste it over here and then query it now. You cannot see what happens. The price has become eleven, but what happens? It is approved and closed actually. Fine, it is approved and closed. It's okay. Uh, but I don't know why it's missing on the suppliers front. It is only upload. Only because the revision one is not created in the suppliers front. What happens? Six eight three four is not visible at all. Basically, I don't know why it's so. <clears throat> now, what happens? We will now create an adjusting document against this now. We will now create an adjusting document. So we will because we are already paid now. So we have to pay one rupee extra. There is ninety rupees extra. We have to pay now. <clears throat> so we have to make an adjustment invoice now. <coughs> Go there. We will now. What happens? Uh, create adjusting invoice. Adjusting documents. P O number six eight three four six eight three four is the one for which what happens? You are going to get now. Supplier name is the Nana percentage. Retro percentage. Then give a tab. Go there. Supplier site and probably take it now. Go there. Resubmit import program. Uh, okay. It doesn't matter. You leave it as is now. Go there. Click on OK now. And then click on submit now. 
click on find so by which we will now be creating an adjusting document on this now point so once in the adjusting document created you can now see a, 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 a retroactive price adjustment invoice one will be there it is called a ppa invoice i think so that invoice would have been created and that becomes ready for a payment now in the payables invoice so the existing document which has been received now what happened the pi is running now point the payables open interface import pi is running so that will be responsible for creating the invoice and the payables actually so the credit adjustment document is now triggering the pi so this is the ppa invoice actually price adjustment fine uh, uh something like that i don't know what exactly that double p one of the p and then one of the adjustment and then i don't know one more p is also that i know that <clears throat> I don't know. So if you go and then open this uh, pie, click on the view output on this now. <clears throat> Payables open interface import. You can now see a PPA invoice is now created for ninety dollars. So that also we can go and then see on the uh, invoice or which now from PPA underscore one zero one against the one zero one invoice. There is an additional one of a PPA ninety dollars. Close it now. Close it. We'll now go to the payables area and then how about it now? Close it. Close it. <clears throat> Switch responsibility to payables now. Go there. Go to the payables. And then query for the invoices. Inquire entry and then invoices and then let us now query this now. Query the supplier now. Go there. At the supplier level, you can query now. When trading partner is Nana percentage, <clears throat> retro percentage, and then query it now and go there. So you now have two invoices coming up. So this is the process of what happens. Are processing the retroactive pricing. So if the supplier says that uh, there is a so I think if there is only not only really one purchase order, there are multiple purchase orders. Some of them might not have been received. Some of them is received. Some of them are received and paid. So what happens is going to work upon everything. And then if you run the retroactive price adjustments, uh, it will be uh, basically uh, create adjusting the prices and then create adjusting documents and payables. Will now what happens? Uh, create the ones if it is already paid actually. Is an excellent functionality, and then uh, if uh, we can very well honor the supplier, if the honor is the supplier is a genuine one, and then if he's asking for a genuine increase on this because of so many other reasons, the implementing company's purchase officer can honor this, and then he can now create the retractive documents basically. So we've got uh, two documents one is the one not one, another the PPA. This thing, so this also uh, uh, the line level distributions are also automatically made now. By no need to at all what happens do any adjustments the line level is not already relieved accrual is relieved and then what happens is not getting made now so no need to make anything at all right go there we have to only validate and then make a payment now. And plus. so this completes the retroactive price this is called a po price adjustment that is why it's called a ppa fine po price adjustment invoice fine that is why the type is known as a ppa invoice actually the ppa invoice so this completes uh, the entire uh, demonstration of a ppa uh, the price uh, retroactive pricing in uh, uh, Eve is now. We'll now go to the fusion and then have a look at it. Why also? Is although I have a feeling it's not having a reduced functionality in fusion now. I don't know why so. I have a feeling that I am making a mistake. But if I find that if I am making any setup mistakes, please communicate to me at nana.app60 at gmail.com. I will now correct myself. Now. I will go there. I will not do this now. I will now go and then log in with one of the users in, in, uh, in fusion now. Go there. So uh, let us now see this functionality in fusion. So here also what happens, you'll now go on and create a supplier actually. Fine, go there. You click on the home icon and then go to the procurement and then create a supplier now. You go to the procurement now. Fine, go to the procurement and then create a supplier now. So go there, click on supplier. Let us now create a supplier for the retractive test. <clears throat> you go there and then you're going to create a supplier now. Fine, click on this task carousel. <laughs> and then click on create a supplier. I'm not going to create a, the same supplier now. And Nana retro sub one. I go there. <coughs> the supplier is Nana underscore retro underscore sub one is a supplier. I go there. I'm not making it as a spend authorized. This is a new addition in Fusion. It is not there in this thing. In the e at all fine. We'll make it as a corporation. Then click on create now. <coughs> you can be a prospective or a spend authorized. Fine. That can be that. So there is a new addition in Fusion actually. So we go into the main page. And then from there, what happens? I go there. And then uh, we will now go down and then uh, we will now go to the payments and then uh, make one of them as a default payment now and go there. We will now go there so that the P2P push will be getting automatically. And select and then click on put the tick mark on this now. The check is now enabled and then go there. Click on save now. So the generic one is now saved and then afterwards we go to the address and then we will get the address now. And click on address. So click on address. I am now going to get the address now. So click on plus and then let me get the address now. So I will now put address now. Let's say, uh, he, uh, I will not say it's uh, what happens. Uh, 
retro is basically for testing of the retro one basically retro underscore adr1 i'm putting it now fine over there uh, country i will not make it as united states it works very nicely fine so i'm not putting only united states over here now we give a tab so i'm going to choose the united states over here now and go there the remaining address is not married if i can leave it as it's now fine over there it is for the ordering as well as the remit to find it is the purchasing and pay actually and i'm going to bring these two things and then go there and then i'll not leave it as i'll give the same <coughs> i'll give the same and close now so the address is now created <coughs> And then we'll go to the contacts and then get a contact now. Go there, click on the contact. Then click on plus now. We'll not get a contact now for the supplier. It is Ananta. And then here it is Narma. This instance is not enabled for iSupply portal and so on. I cannot demonstrate that basically. And go there. And then I will now go to the contact address, go to the actions, and then go to select and add. I will now add address over here now. So this is the only address which is available here. If I click on apply and close, by which what happens? This contact is now going to reside at this address actually. It is now residing at this address. If I click on save and close, by which the address is also created. Now it will go and get a site now. Let's go there. Let us now go to the site and create it now. Click on that. Click on OK and then let us now go and get a site now. So we are now in the process of creating a site. Fine. Go there. Go to the site and then click on the plus icon. I will now get a site. Here address and sites are separate, whereas in eBiz it is not so. Fine. Drop down the address. There is the only address which is coming up. That will get defaulted to the site. I can override the site name. Fine. Go there. Site one, I'm now overriding it now. Fine, go there. That's it. The remaining ticks are was okay. Go down. And then, if you give a save, what happens? The remaining tab regions will become just like in EBS also. What happens at this stage? You have to give it now. So, give a save now. So, then afterwards, what happens? You know, specific everything of purchasing. So, we are not going into in depth of it because what happens? That is not the motive of this. No, fine. We'll not stop at this stage of a supply creation. No, fine. So, Nana underscore uh, what happens? Uh, Nana underscore retro underscore sub one. Site one is now ready. Fine, it comes even close now. We'll not go over and create an item for this. We had already demonstrated everything in our uh, previous uh, exercises, basically. And click on close, and then here we'll now go there, and then we'll now create an item. Right? Click on the home icon, and then go to the product management, and then go to the product information management. From there, we'll be creating a new item for this now. Fine, go to the product management, and then go to the product information management. So from there, we are going to make a new item. Now. So click on it. So let us now create an item retro, not a retro test, retro item test. Now I go there. Just click on it and then click on create item. Click on the task carousel and then click on create item. I'm going to create an item now. So normally it will be done only on the master organization. If I go there, M00. So M00, the child dogs will not come over here now. The root item class is the root item class. We are not putting this over here now. So we already seen all those things in our previous exercises actually. And go there. Go down. And then, uh, I will now apply the ready-made template which I have now copied from an existing arc to arc. I am now going to apply it. I click on OK now. <clears throat> okay, the extensive flux field is now giving a problem. Fine, that will be recompiled actually. If I click on S now, fine. There is no access. We'll not ignore this warning and then go ahead on this now. Go there, item. So I will now put the item over here now. Fine, go there. It's Nana underscore retro underscore item. So I will now say it's a retro active. Price test item. Go there and then everything. And then afterwards, I go to the associations directly. <clears throat> and then associate a child or go to go actions and then go to select an ad. And then let me add a child or go in. I go there. It is M601 is the one. M601. And then enter it. So I'm going to add this child or select it and then click on add, apply it done. So by which it is not done. Go there. And then I will modify the price to 10 now. Fine. Go, go to the specifications and then go to the purchasing and then modify the price to 10 now. So click on it and then go to the purchasing area <clears throat> and then let me modify the price to 10 now in this place. <clears throat> so in all this price, I'm not going to make it 10. And go there. That will now default onto the BPA when you're creating it now. Fine, go there. That's it. So nothing else is required on the stage. And click on save and close by which whatever the item is ready now. Now we'll now go and then create a BPA now. So we have the item ready, the supply ready. We'll now go there and then create a BPA now. And go there. So click on the home icon and then go to the procurement and then go to the purchasing now. From there, let us now create a BPA now. I go there, go to the procurement, and then go to the purchasing, and click on the purchasing now. And then we will now make an agreement, a BPA agreement we are going to make now. So click on the task carousel and then go to the create agreements now. It is a create order, it is a create agreement. I click on the create agreement over there at the bottom. And then here, from there, I am now going to create an item, agreement on this. So let us now create an agreement on this now. Go there. So it is a blanket purchase agreement, it is a Nana underscore. Retro, fine. It will not come. I think. Oh, I made a one more mistake. No, fine. I made one more mistake in the supply creation. Let me go and correct it. No, fine. I have not made. I have not given the site assignments on this. Fine, go there. So I will not go to the suppliers, and then I have not given a site assignment, so it will not be coming there at all. That is a mistake now. 
Buddha was here. Buddha was here. Go to the manage suppliers. Go there. Nana underscore retro. And then give a search now. I'm not going to edit it now. I'll go there. <coughs> Nana underscore retro. Uh, what is this? What is the mistake here? Nana and then make a search now. You know, coming fine, go there. Nana, uh, oh, Yetro, I made a mistake here. <laughs> the supplier name is no. The, uh, the R has come over here actually. <laughs> it has not come to the end actually. Go there. What is I go to the sites area. I go to the sites area. And then here, what happens? Go there and then edit it. I cannot edit it now. I had to give a site assignments of this. Go there. I go to the site assignments. So this is equivalent to the multi org access control here. I have not done it fine. Go to the actions and go to add now. <clears throat> and then drop it down. You have got only one access to one procurement business unit. So there's no coming up automatically now. We have already seen all those things there. Fine, go there. Shift location is M60 underscore lock underscore one. I'm going to give it now. Fine, I will not make the same as a built location also. Take a copy of it and then put in the built location also. Push log now. Fine. The remaining will be done by the financial stream basically. Like uh, the withholding taxes and the library distribution, procurement distribution, etc. etc. Fine. Now, having given this, it will not appear on a purchase order. Fine, click on save or close now. Now it can really appear. So there's a must now find go there is no done. <clears throat> I have not given the site assignment, so I have to go the purchase order. <clears throat> and then I will now create an agreement now. Fine, click on the create agreement. I'm not going to make a blanket agreement. So go there. If you put nana and then say G Boomba, it will now come. I have no coming. I go there. Supplier site, everything will be coming. Fine, click on create now. I'm not going to make a BPA now. So let us now make a VPA now. Go for that. And then here, what happens? Uh, since we are going to use it in the automatic route, what about the start and end date is really very, very much required. Now, fine, go there. Go there. Then always give a previous date of the start date. Then give an end date. Oh, you know, fine, go there. Then we'll not give you end date. Fine, the right. Some date. Fine, very fast. Normally, it will be a three months time. Fine. Amount agreed. Agreement amount. Fine, go there. Thousand. It's beautifully done. What happens? It gets copied into amount limit. And then amount limit is not editable in the VPA. Remember, fine. There's a beautiful concept which I already seen now. That is a nice concept. The functionality has been beautifully applied. The MR on the header is a lab access for you. I'm not doing it in this access. Now, fine, go there. I will now add the item over here. I'm going to click on add. So, let me add the item. Item is Nana. <coughs> it's a Nana retro item. Just now, go there. Retro item. Go there. This is the one I have given it. And then I'm not going to edit it. Fine, go there. Click on edit now. Fine. Here, there is one more issue now. If you make it as a cumulative, it's now giving a problem now. Fine, that is another problem. I don't understand why I have to make it as non cumulative. That is another thing. Uh, it doesn't uh, sometimes cumulative is not working at all. Cumulative price breaks is not working. I don't know why it's so. Uh, I have a doubt on all these things. Fine. You only have to make an exercise. You know MR on the lines region is a lab exercise. Fine. Go there. Amount agreed and uh, quantity agreed are again. Uh, it is only for information purposes, just like in EVS now, basically. I'm not giving any price break. They're all lab exercises because we are not doing any full uh, set of a BPA over here. Now I'm not going to test that attractive pricing. Fine. Go there. So I'm now making it as a non cumulative and then give okay now. Fine. Is it end all around? Afterwards, what happens? And now it was all done now. After having done this, I go there and then go to the uh, controls now. Fine, click on the controls there. What happens? I'm going to enable the retractive pricing. Fine, go there. So uh, we'll now go there and then here, what happens? We'll now order creation process, the automatic documentation process. What happens? You leave it as such now, fine. All the tick marks there. In the retractive pricing, what happens? Enable it and then what happens? Initiate the process upon this now. Fine, enable it now. Fine. Initiate the process upon agreement approval. Fine, the orders reprice all the open orders only, and you can now say well, whatever is open only will be done. Fine, reprice open orders only, and then communicate price updates. Fine, it's okay. That's uh, that's question now. Fine, go there. <clears throat> uh, uh, and then click on submit by which what happens? The three thousand three orders now getting made. Fine, three thousand orders now getting made for the BP for the item. Fine, go there. You orders. Fine, click on submit now. So it is not done. Now we are going to make an automatic uh, document entry there. Uh, we uh, what happens? We run the generate. Uh, concurrent now generate sourcing rules here we also have a similar one by which what happens we cannot even the generate sourcing entries fine if you go then have a look at it uh, the entries will not be there at all here if you go there and say this now fine go there we will not go to the approved supply list entry and then have a look at it now fine go there uh, the supply base you go to the what is supposed to manage approved supply list entry there won't be anything because we have not made anything at all and go there item is nana underscore retro or et or retro underscore item fine you just give it app so item will be coming fine click on search now you won't be finding anything at all there won't be any entry at all so not a retro item will not be having entry at all <clears throat> not as now we will not generate it now fine like in us what happens we can even generate it so there we have a generate concurrent generate sourcing rule here what happens we have another concurrent now fine go there now see this now 
this place is also having a generate approved supply list address fine click on this one so through which what i was will be creating all the things fine go there click on submit a new process and go there they will not put the supply on the information is okay fine go there there also what i'm putting it now fine go there is a nana underscore yetro <coughs> that is the supplier now fine go there supply site the site one now and then agreement number is 3003 now 3003 is the one then go there and then click on submit so with these informations what happens in the beginning there also we are we are passing on all these informations in ebus here also we are passing on all these information and click on submit by which what happens the automatic uh, what happens the asl entry will be made and then here we cannot make the sr asr because what happens we need a vcp license for this one this instance is not having a vcp license only when you have a vcp license or order management license the sr and asr can be populated they have all been pushed into that place basically so this two components we cannot see now but at least what happens we cannot see the asl bp part asl bp part now sr asr cannot be seen in this instance this is not having the thing go click on that now so it's not run the concurrent is running in the back end now now we go there and then have a look at this manage one fine go there we will now go to Uh, what happens? You are uh, supply base, and then go to the manage approved supply list entry, and then have a look at it. So we are going to have a look at it now. Go there. I will not put the item over here now. Find Nana <coughs> underscore retro underscore item. And then click on search now. You know, find. Okay. Move to my friend. Click on search now. Now what happens? You cannot see an entry is getting made. The ASL entry is now made. Find go there. This is what us. If you go and then click on edit now, you cannot see the ASL entry is now there. So we can even automatically generate the ASL entry here now. Fine, go there. It's not done. So we have this now in the bottom. We have the PP. Fine, what is it? This is having again a reduced functionality when compared to EBS. EBS has got an excellent functionality here. The ASL is now slightly reduced. It's not having that much of a functionality when it's now there. Fine, go there. I will not give a cancel. Now I am now going to get a requisition now. And then the demand is the start point of a P2P process now. Fine, let us go and then get a requisition for the item. Fine, click on this. You go to the purchase requisition. Then let us now get a requisition. Now. Go there. Click on the requisition line entry, and then I'm going to create a requisition entry. Go there. <clears throat> so the moment you approve it, what happens? It automatically creates a PO. There is no need for us to run any concurrence at all. There, the workflow background has been run here. Nothing to run at all. Go there. Nana underscore retro underscore item. Fine. Give a tab now. I'm putting it on fine. I'll not say the quantity is let us say fifteen uh, quantities now. Fine, go there. I'll not give it fifteen to ten is one fifty now. Fine. So it's not exceeding the thousand now. Fine, thousand is the limit which I have given now. Fine, not done. Fine, here what happens? The price is coming and then again I will not put the reference agreement. Fine, three thousand three is the reference agreement. I will put it now. Fine, go there. It is not a contract. I have to make a change to bracket. So if you have the SR and ASR, everything will be coming automatically over here. That is what it is. So SR and ASR cannot be set in this instance because it is not having a VCV license. Now, fine, go there. I am not putting this agreement number. So once when you put the agreement number, uh, and then give a tab now. Three thousand three is an agreement number. Blanket purchase agreement for this now. Fine, go there. Click on. What happens? Agreement number is three thousand three. Give a tab and then click on search now. It has to show. It's not showing you. Fine, select it and then click on OK now. Fine, select it and then click on OK. So once when you populate the agreement number, the supplier inside everything will be coming up over here now. Fine, you understand a little bit now. The supplier inside everything will be populated over here now on that position. <clears throat> So, if you have the VCP license you now coming, if you have the VCP license, the moment you give an item and then tab out, everything will be coming out. The supply side, everything will be coming. The BB, everything will be coming, but it's not there. So, 15 count is a 10, 150 is a one. Fine, click on add to requisition, and now go to gold, and then do it. Now, fine, go there. I will not click on edit and submit. I go to the next level, and then see whether anybody is. Uh, I will know what to have an automatic approval on this. Now, fine, go there. I will not select it on this. I will not open it. Now, go and then see whether the approval is automatic or somebody has modified it. Now, fine. Uh, because any many people are working on it now. Fine. Click on the navigator. Then click on the name, and then click on the settlement maintenance. And then we we'll now go to the manage requisition approvals, and then have a look at it now. Manage requisition approvals. Enter it now. I'll go there. We are going to where the manage requisition approvals. So here, this is now enabled, and then click on the edit tools now. We'll now go and then have a look at it now. So click on edit rules, <clears throat> and then here uh, one rule is already in vogue now. Fine, go there. You'll not see whether it is automatic approval or not. Fine, go there and I will put it now. It is automatic approval only. Fine. So you'll not be having much of an issue. Fine, go there and then click on the manage approvals and then see whether application developer is going to approve it or not. One zero one eight is now referencing the three thousand three actually. And then it is, a, it is only an application developer. Fine, go there and then click on submit now. By which order was it now submitted? So once when it is submitted, you can now see the PO getting created automatically for this one. Go there. 
there is no need for us to run any concurrent at all. I need to go there. It's not pending approval. So if you click on this now, you can now see that what happens. It will be going to an approval status now. It is now submitted for approval now. Actually. So here, still pending approval. If you click on the pending approval hyperlink, here you can now see this now. And the additional facility when compared to this now, fine, you can see. Now application developer has approved, approved the task is also completed. Fine. It is in the process of uh, making a change now, fine, go there. Click on done now. Now it will all get approved. It is in the process of approval now, fine, go there. If you click again, there is no refresh button at all here. That is the biggest problem. I click on done now, and then come out of it, it will be approved now. <clears throat> so what happens, you can now see it's approved. There is no thing at all, fine. If you click on this, whatever, the buyer will be taking up for processing actually, fine. You can now see IE icon coming over here, now fine. Click on this IE icon. It says that the buyer is now processing it now, fine. Wait for some time, and then the order number will be coming over here. Fine, the buyer is now. There is no need for us to run any concurrent. Upon PR approval, PO gets created automatically if the automatic document creation is set now. Fine. We have already created the ASL entry over there. And then apart from that, we have one more thing which you have to set now. Fine, go there. In this place, if you go there and the sales now, fine, go there. In this place, I will not cancel it and then come out of it now. One more thing has to be done. Fine, go there. Click on it. And then go to the circle maintenance. And then we'll now go to the configure requisitioning function now. Fine, go there. Configure. <coughs> Uh, requisitioning on your procurement business function, sorry. Configure uh, percentage procurement percentage BUSI percentage. Fine. I'm going to go to the configure procurement business function. There, uh, go to the configure procurement business function. We have to have the default buyer. Fine. The default buyer is a must here. It is not so in the case of eBiz. Now, fine. Go there. Uh, here, the default buyer is a must. And then the concurrent is not required for us. Fine. I'll go there. Go for the M61. Uh, M60 business unit. I'm choosing it. Fine. Click on OK. And then going inside now. Here, default buyer has to be provided. Fine, no us. This is required only for VMI in eBiz now. When you are going for a VMI, vendor manager inventory, the buyer is required in VMI. Here, what happens is this is required for an automation of a PR into PO in Fusion actually. And then no need for any concurrent at all. Go there. Now, you can now see that what happens if you click on the order number, will be coming. Click on done now, fine, go there and then have a look at it now. Fine. So look at it, fine. On the chi, we got the order now. Fine, 1018 is now having a 2018. Fine. So three zero three zero zero three three is one, and then for which order is the order? It is at a date of ten. Fifteen quantity at ten dollars. Now the buyer is the supplier is saying that what happens? The ten is not sufficient. He had to increase it to eleven. Now. So we are going to make a change of this now. Fine. Go there. No done. So here what happens? The email communication is automatic actually. Fine. It comes over here automatically. So whenever you are approving it, what happens? You'll be getting it. Fine. Go there. Not on sixty. So. What happens? The buyer will be getting information. The purchase requisitions approved is now coming. The BPA is approved is now coming. Fine, go there. And then afterwards, what happens? We are now having what happens? The document is implemented against this requisition. This information is also coming against the video. So this is a PRPO automation link. And so what happens is now coming up. Now he is going to make a change. You know, fine. What he is going to do? The supplier is now going to make it. The, the purchase officer is now going to make a change. Now you know, see how the change gets affected. So uh, he has agreed upon the uh, requirement of this. What happens? Uh, your uh, supplier. So he is now going to make a change on the BBA now. Fine, go there. We will now go there. And then we'll now uh, <clears throat> go to the purchase orders now. Fine, go to the purchase orders. And then here we are going to make a change now. Fine, go there. This place. We'll now click on it now. <clears throat> we'll now go on them. Go to the manage agreements. And then let us now go to the 3003 agreement now. 3003 agreement. I'm going to make a change now. Go there. Agreement is 3003. 3003. And then give a tab. And then click on search now. We are searching for this agreement now. Go there. And then we will now select it and then go to actions and go to edit now. Are, by which we are now going to edit now. I click on it. I am going to make edit. So I click on S now. <clears throat> the action will now create a change order. Okay, fine. Uh, I will now say change of price. Fine. Change of price. Go there. And then you are now modifying the price now. Fine. Go there. You are going to modify the price from 10 to 11. Fine. 10 to 11. Now modifying it. This change will now automatically reflect on the purchase order also fine. That uh, reason 1018, the, uh, rather, what is that, uh, 20, what is the number here? What is the number? It's a 2018. So on the 2018, what happens? The change will be getting reflected over here. Fine, go there. So he is now doing it now. Go there. So one, 11, the 10 is now changed to 11 now. Fine, go there. So click on submit. The change order is now submitted for this. Fine, click on submit. Now. So the change order is now submitted for approval now. I want us. So 3003 is now submitted for approval and go there. And now we go and then research on it. Fine, select it and then click on research. Fine, click on search now. So it is now undergoing a change now. Fine, go there. So there will be an icon which will be coming that it is undergoing a change now. Fine, this icon says what? This is now undergoing a change now. Fine, go there. 
a change order is not pending on this stock and go there in order to make a change if i click on done then i'll now query the 2018 I'll now go and query the 2018 you now see what happens if i go and click on it then now query for the 2018 so go to the manage orders and then query the 2018 so order number is what 2018 and then give it a tab now now i'm going to query it down if i click on search now i'm querying it now it was previously approved now so once that that is approved it will not undergo a change automatically the 2018 will not undergo a change you can now see there is no icon at all and there's no icon fine go there so that approval process is still under process fine click on search now so once that is approved what happens the 2018 will be automatically undergoing a change <clears throat> you can now see an eye icon coming up over here now fine go there so the price has to change now fine it is it must be what happens Uh, 15 into 11 is must be 165 actually i can on search now the price has to get changed so wait for this to come fine because now is the an ai icon come up my ai icon has come back on the ai icon it says what about the, the change is not undergoing now it is not undergoing a change actually so on the purchase order order by the change order spending so that 3003 upon completion it is going to trigger automatically this now there is no need to run any concurrent at all like in ebis in ebis what happens is we run a concurrent called retroactive price adjustments so here it is not required so this happens automatically on the purchase order now we can see 168 has got changed you can go and go refine it and so it will also be communicated to the supplier fine go there so 3003 is changed and then the 2018 is also changed that also will be getting a message so here uh, the email communications are automatic there is no need for us to set up the pop and imap servers basically fine so they will all be coming up automatically also so 2018 is also changed that also will be coming up now fine go there this is changed that also will be getting a message now it can take some time now go there so here what happens you can now see this now select it and then go there go to the actions and then go to what uh, you go to go to view now fine click on view you can now see the price has got changed to so 11 now so the price is now changed to 11 <coughs> go down and then see this now <coughs> the price is now changed now now let us go and then receive it now and now see the message has come on now fine You must have got it. You got a message now, right? So the 2008 is not so changed. If you click on it now, you cannot see the changes now, right? The 2008 is not changed. That message is coming. Now let us receive it against this now, right? So this email communication is automatic. Uh, there may be some information over here or something is there. You can even customize this message with the help of technical option. Right? It's not saying description is retroactive price change. That is somewhere it's coming now, and because of it is not coming, I go there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to make a receipt now. Right? No longer receipt. In two zero one eight, I'm going to make a reserve. Now. I go there, go to the place, and then let me receive this. Two zero one eight, I'm going to make a reserve. I click on the home icon, and then go to the warehouse operations, then go to the reserves now. You click on the home icon, and then go to the warehouse operations, then go to the reserves now. <clears throat> I'm not clicking on the reserves, and then I'm going to make a reserve now. Go there. So let us now make a reserve now. Two zero one eight is the PO. <clears throat> you click on it now. I go there. I will now make a expected reserves. Two zero one eight, I'm going to make it now. So purchase order number is two zero one eight now, two zero one eight. And then give it a tap, and then let me make a null one, and then make a query on this now. Click on search, and I'm going to make it. Entire ninety commodities I'm going to do. Fine, click on the select it, and then click on receive now. I'm not going to get the entire ninety commodities now. So two zero one eight, I'm not going to make a receipt now. I go there. So click on uh, what happens? I click on ninety commodities over here now. Ninety commodities, and give it a tap. The distance is inventory. Everything is now getting popular. Fine, click on create the receipt by which what happens? The GR number will be created now. Your GR and gets created. You know what I'm saying? Click on submit now. So what happens? One zero one four is not done. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is, I will now make a change, another change. Now. We'll now see what happens. From eleven to twelve, I'm going to make a change. Now. We'll now see what happens. You go there. I will now go to the what is called agreement and then do it now. I'll let us now make a change. One more change. We are going to make it now. So click on it, and then I'll now go to the change. Now. I'll click on it, and then I'll now go to the manage agreements. Now, if I go to the manage agreements, and then I'll now make a change of this. Three thousand three. I'm going to make a change. Now. I'll now see what happens here. Now. So here, the total changes are totally automatic. No need to run any external concurrents at all. When you make a change of the agreement, all the POs connected to it are all getting changed one by one. So go there. Select and then click on edit. Now I go there. Edit. Actions edit. I'm going to edit it from eleven to twelve. I'm going to make a change. Now fine. It's okay. Fine. Go there. <coughs> I will now give a what's called a meaningful description of the change order now. Jingle check on, fine. And then go down because it's a mandatory field actually. Fine, we have to give it now. I'll go there. And then in the bottom order, but I'm going to make a change from eleven to twelve. I'm going to make a change from eleven to twelve. And now see what happens. How it is triggering this? I go there. And then click on submit now. Fine, I'm submitting it. So three thousand three is now changed from eleven to twelve. Fine, click on submit now. 
remember we have already received it so click on submit and then the change order number two is now done click on okay now it is not done so here we'll now go on and have a look at again and go to the, go to the manage agreements and then look at the 3003 now it is now undergoing a change now fine go there so we have to re-query over here now fine go there we have to re-query then only the icon will come now fine, go there click on search again so the i icon will come for the change of this now fine the change order is now pending for an approval it's not showing a old change order now fine the change order 2 is now still not come now fine once it is come the i icon will go away now and go there click on it now and then click on search now the i icon has gone fine we'll now go on and have a look at the purchase order now fine go the 2018 will now go on and look at it now fine go there click on done and then click on the task carousel and then we'll go to the manage orders. So 2018 will now query. It will now query 2018. 2018, then you tab. And then we are going to make a search. Click on search. Now it will undergo a change now. Fine, we know it started now. And go there. Click on search now. So it is it to start now. And go there. So click on search now. It is not yet started actually. Now it is not triggering anything at all here. You cannot see this one. You cannot see it is not triggering even. I think it will trigger. I am not sure about it. I forgot the lecture. I think it will trigger. Now we now have a look at the mail which is now coming over here. 2003 is changed actually. Right. Go there. So, come. so the 2018 has also has to undergo a change now. Go there. The 2018 also has to undergo a change now. We will now wait for the mail to come now. <clears throat> Nothing is happening here actually. This is where I am stuck actually. Right, this is where I am stuck. So when you make a result, we are unable to, the retroactive pricing is not triggering at all. Right, the retroactive pricing is not triggering. I may be missing some setups. And then I get a clear mail stating that what happens uh, since the item is already received, we cannot make a change. That is what I will now get a mail here. I, know that I used to get a mail also over the note. But here it is not even triggering actually. But I have seen a mail coming that what happens if it is received, it is not doing it all. So there may be some setups which are missing, I think. In EVIS, even we can receive and then pay, and then we can even create an adjusting document also. But here, the moment I make a result, it is not triggering the change at all. I don't know how to do it now. Right? That is not the correct philosophy at all. Right? It has to update everything. The retroactive pricing means what? Even if it is received and then paid also, it has to make a change at all. But it is not happening at all. It's still 160 only. It is not even triggering. But I have seen that it is not triggering that uh, it will not trigger a change order and then it reverses the change actually. It reverses the change with the mail stating that the item is already received. So that way it is coming actually. So there I have an issue. Uh, I, I don't know whether it is a reduced functionality or otherwise uh, uh, that, is the, that is the functionality maybe or otherwise I may be missing some setups. And some setups I'm missing it now. Fine. So if you find out anything, please write to me at nonadapt60 at gmail.com. So what happens? It now saying it's now close for receiving. It has to uh, adjust basically. It doesn't matter even if it is close for receiving. Uh, if it is, if I do a partial receipt against this, what happens? It does. What happens? It reverses actually. Fine. That also I've seen it now. Uh, I now made a full receipt now. If you make a partial receipt, it triggers a change. But what happens? It reverses the change also. The change gets reversed also with the mail to me also. Now I have done a full receipt. Now it's not close for receiving. It's not even touching it actually. A partial receipt. It is not trying to start to trigger it. But what happens afterwards? It stops. Maybe some setup is missing. I am not sure about it because this is not the desired functionality. The supplier will ask, but all the POs, all the prior POs, you would like to have a make a change. So that is how the retroactive pricing has to work. In eBay's now it's working now. So if you find out any solution for this now, find where exactly I'm missing. Please write to me at nonandrap60 at gmail.com. I will be very grateful to you. Uh, and then uh, this R&D is still uh, in vogue now, basically, not yet, not yet completed actually. Also. This is an excellent functionality in Nebus. And then here also, it must have the same functionality also. So what happens? Uh, do subscribe below on the subscribe button. And then by the side of the subscribe button, there will be a bell icon. You click on it once, the bell icon will be having kink. So on the signal will be coming. So that what happens? You'll be auto-notified whenever I make any new uh, videos on this. Right? So you'll be able to track upon. So at least once in a week or so. What happens? I'll be uploading some new videos over there. So you'll be getting greatly benefited. Fine. So thanks for patiently watching uh, this video of this retroactive pricing right from uh, eBiz up to Fusion. Now, fine. Thank you. Bye, all of you. Fine. We'll now see you on the next video. Fine.
I hope that you have enjoyed it. You can even put your comments over here in the bottom. I will not have a look at it. Fine. It will be very grateful for me if you are putting some comments on it. Fine. So uh, I love my students to what happens, uh, prosper in their career. Fine. Best wishes to all of you. Fine. Thank you, Nana. <clears throat>